The electron configuration of silver follows most of the regular rules that you're familiar with, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. You know, the order of filling. Your teacher might have shown you a staircase like this where you draw diagonal lines. I prefer to just know this. It's pretty easy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then the S's are over here, and the P's are over here, and the D's are here, except they are one behind. So in the fourth row, you're at 3D. You'll just get used to it. I've memorized it. I'm sure you will as well, because you're a baller, just like I am. In any case, silver is an exception to the rule because it ends with a D9. In that case, it's going to shift itself around. But let's not put the cart ahead of the horse. Let's create the full electron configuration first. Now, silver on the periodic table is here in the fifth row, and it's column 11, or group 11 if you're into that. So I have to get all the way up to about here in the fifth row. I have to go through 1s, and I can fit two electrons in there. Next is 2s. All of the s's can fit two electrons. I'm going to fill up my 2p. That's 2p6. 3s, you can fit two electrons in an s. 3p, you can fit six electrons in a p. Next is 4s, it's gonna be 4s2. We're gonna go all the way through 3d, that's 3d10. Do you know how I know it's 10? It's because that block is 10 elements wide on the periodic table, yeah. Next is 4p, that's 4p6. Then we go to 5s, we can fit two of those. And then we get to 4d, which is where silver is. Now we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 elements into silver here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 elements in from yttrium all the way up to silver. So we're going to call this 4D9. Your job as a chemist though is to realize that D9s are generally unstable and it prefers, the element or atom I should say, prefers to take away one of the next level's S's to create a full D subshell. What I'm trying to say is, anytime you see S2D9, I want you to replace that with S1D10. The reason is that half-filled subshells also have some stability. You were probably taught that full and uh, perfectly full subshells are most stable. Half-filled is also a certain amount of stability. This is now a half-filled S, which is pretty good, and an absolutely full D, which is also good. Whereas here you had a full S, which is good, and a not half or full D. So to complete the D subshell at a higher energy, you're going to borrow an electron. That promotion is easy. It happens. It's your job to know that S2D9s become S1D10s. Surely you want the shortcut, though. The shortcut is to find silver and go back to the previous noble gas, which for me is krypton. And krypton ends the 4P6 portion of this. So I can cut this away all the way up to 4P6 and just replace that whole thing up to and including 4P6 with KR in square brackets. Then I write the 5S1 and the 4D10. And I have donezo. Beautiful. Now your teacher may have asked you about silver with its ion charge. Silver likes to have a charge of plus one. To create a plus one charge, you need to take away one electron and you're supposed to take it away from the highest n or shell number first. Here I have n equals 5 and here I have n equals 4. I have to take away this electron first. So I'm going to rewrite my kr. If you need the full electron configuration, you got to write all of this out like a chump. I'm going to take away that s. Now, I personally like writing 5s0 just so that people know that there are now no electrons left there. And 4d10. There you go, one less electron, a positive one charge. The electron configuration for silver neutral is S1d10. And the electron configuration for silver with a plus one charge is S0d10. Got it?
Got it. Hey, best of luck to you.